right away, just want to say thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to go to where the goalies start, uh, it starts around a minute and four seconds with John and Gibson, and they're in alphabetical order. I hope you can find your respective team from there if that's what you're here for. Uh, other than that, let's get into some background really quick. Around eight months ago, I made my last YouTube video, which was a goalie stance comparison video before I got tangled up with school. And with being a 13 sub channel at the time, getting 2,000 views, now like 2,800 or something, it was mind boggling. It was like, oh shit, 2,000 views, man, that's like two bucks. Oh my god. And so uh, that, that video was made very poorly. It had subpar editing. Don't get me wrong, this one still does. It has happy go lucky vlogger music. Just it wasn't a good video. And with that being said, I am making this one. Just a quick disclaimer, this one doesn't have Matt Murray or any of the goalies that kind of got gypped out of having their own stances. So with that being said, let's get started. Starting us off, we have John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks. I think that overall EA did get his stance right. They got his glove and block position right as far as they are in front of his body and just below the tops of his pad as we see in the picture. I think that the only thing that EA could do to critique this stance is have him stand up a little bit more, use that 6'3 body build he has instead of being a little bit more hunched down to the ice like a Jonathan Quick or a Tuka Rask. Next up, we have the backup of John Gibson, Jonathan Bernier. I think that overall, they got his stance okay. The uh, blocker position, the width of the stance is all good to me. I think that the only thing I'd do is I would scrunch him down just a tiny bit so he's a little bit more compressed in the body. And I would also lower his glove slash tweak it out to the side a little bit more. And yeah, super simple stance for Jonathan Bernier. Now we have the man who scored goal line to goal line at the All-Star game to give his team the win, and that would be Mike Smith. I don't think I would really change anything about his stance. Like, if I had to get super nitpicky, maybe I would move his arms in just a little bit more so he's a little bit more compressed, but other than that, I, I just I can't think of anything. Like, they got his width right, they got his, like, how, you know, tall he makes himself look right. They, I just, I can't think of anything else. Next, we've got my boy Tuka Rask, who I love for his meltdowns. With Tuka being considered a top 10 goalie in the NHL, most likely more top 5, we can tell that EA spent a little bit more time on designing his stance properly. They really got his low center to gravity stance spot on, legs spread out, glove and blocker where they should be, and they should simply do it. With Tuka being a notorious good goalie in the NHL, they should have his stance correct. It just became apparent to me that the Viking himself, Ben Bishop 2.0, the NHL 16 glitch goalie, does not have his own stance. I do understand that Robin Leonard isn't anything crazy in the NHL. Hell, he was injured all last year. Or, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, he was injured all last year. So, like, I get him not having a stance, but when you make Jonathan Bernier have a stance and James Reimer have a stance, I don't know what's going on, to be honest. Now on to the guy who the Blues shipped off as soon as they realized that Jake Allen was worth a damn. Brian Elliott of the Calgary Flames. I believe that he has a perfect stance. His glove's a little bit higher than his blocker. His block is a little bit lower than his glove. He has the really wide, low stance that he's, I don't want to say known for, because he's not really known for anything in my opinion. But, I mean, his stance is perfect in my mind. Now on to Corey Crawford, who is either considered a god or nobody likes him at all. There's no in between. I think that EA got his stance good for being a top 10 goalie. I don't think they got him as well as Tukarask. I think that his upper body looks a little quirky in the game. But other than that, they got his glove and blocker, you know, level with the top of his pads. Like, I understand that part. I like that part. They got his gaping five hole. They made it a little too small for me in the game. But other than that, Good stance. With me being an abs fan, it was hard to think about a joke for my boy Varley, but then I thought about the past three seasons of pain, and I just... Varley needs to learn what the word consistency means. Now on to his stance. I think the stance is fine. I think they got it perfect. Wide stance, awkward glove position at the 9 o'clock, low blocker, very overall just funky, yeah, funky stance. Him and Boobtitsky both have 
similar stances as we'll see on with the Columbus Blue Jackets. You can't really diss Bob after the year he had. I mean, his playoff performance was subpar, but I mean, other than that, he had a career record year, and in my opinion, he's going to win the Vesna this year. So, uh, onto a stance. Stance is very similar to Varlamov's. They're both Russian. They both have that same stance. Glove 9 o'clock, blocker out, wide stance, low, center of gravity. Just They got the stances right for these two Russians. I did decide to put Ben Bishop on the stars simply because I do think that he will sign with them after being traded from L.A. I mean, he's not going to be backing up Jonathan Quick, obviously. And for being the top 10 goalie in the league, or maybe top 5, probably more top 10, they got a stance okay. I mean, after all, EA said that the stances don't affect how they stop the puck. You know, with him being 6'7", maybe if they did raise him up a little bit more, hey, you, you never know. But yeah, they got him right. The club position, stance, a okay with me. Now we have Kari Lettinen, who could potentially be a veteran backup for the Dallas Stars next year behind Ben Bishop. Really, it's kind of like, I almost feel like Kari Lettinen was one of those players where EA was about to put out their game, and then it was like, oh, shit, we forgot Kari Lettinen. Hey, let's just move his block a little bit. Let's make it different. And uh, I had an epiphany while, you know, looking over these stances. I don't know if EA really did it, but I think they messed up his, you know, being a lefty and being a righty because I'm pretty sure in that photo, that's Lettinen. Now on to the goalie that I just don't think EA likes. I remember using him in 14, 15, and 16 and him being ass in every single one. I haven't even tried him in 17. Maybe they changed it. Maybe I was just bad. You never know. But I think that they got his stance spot on for being the starter of the Red Wings. Now kind of flickering on and off between him and Mrazek. But glove, nice 9 o'clock position. Really crunched up, you know, squished together chest. Blocker, everything. I think it's good. I'm going to be honest. I can't think of a joke for Talbot. But hey, at least they got his stance right, in my opinion, for NHL 17. Or wait, actually... I th- is that the generic stance? I honestly don't know. I mean, it looks like the generic stance, but hey, maybe maybe they tilted him forward a little bit. You know, kind of like the Kari Lettinen blocker. Maybe they just tilted his chest forward a little bit and called it a good day. Yeah, yeah, that that's what he they did. They moved his chest. I I, I don't have a joke directed at Luongo, but he was involved in one of the biggest jokes in NHL history, and that is the Islanders trading him away for a first overall pick. That first overall pick turned into Di Pietro. Di Pietro turned into a broadcaster on MSG+, Plus, not even the real MSG, MSG+. Plus. So let, let's think about that. The Islanders traded Luongo for a broadcaster. Round of applause for the Islanders organization. Yeah, good one, Islanders. Oh yeah, the stance is all good in my mind. I'm lost for words. I really didn't expect Reimer to have his own stance. I mean, like, I understand that he was, you know, pretty good or decent when he was in Toronto, but I really just didn't expect him to have his own stance. Hell, I mean, I didn't expect Bernier to either, being a backup this year, but I think they got his stance okay, even if it was super simple of just, you know, leaning him over a little bit and moving his gloves just a little, little bit. I think he they got a good stance. There would have been rioting in the streets if EA messed up Jonathan Quick stance. I'm just kidding with you. It's a damn NHL game. Jack shit would have happened except for some bitching on the Reddit forums. But with that being said, they did get it right. They showed him off in the NHL 17 trailer to help build the hype. Like, oh my gosh, they got that generic stance of Jonathan Quick. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it worked. They, they got the stance. Low everything. Now they just need to incorporate goalie play styles. Someone needs to let those damn wild fans know that that doob chant that they're doing has been being done in Columbus since 2012. And as much as it pains me to say it, Dubnik is a top 10, more of pushing top 5 goal in the league. And with that being said, they spent the time on it and made it look like he is. They got a stance down good. I, I can't really correct it at all. Besides adding his own play style, they got a stance perfect. Would you believe me right now if I told you you were looking at the world's best goalie and the Montreal Canadiens? Don't let that sink in. It's also very disheartening that the best goalie in the world in the Habs couldn't knock out Queen Henrietta in the rags and you had to leave it up to the Senators. Come on. 
on a very serious note, best goal in the world, damn straight they got his stance right. Only thing that I could say is it'd be sick if they could get his play style in the game. But, hey, can't complain. I'm going to just say it. I underestimate EA because here is another top five goalie. that They got the stance perfect. There is no other way that in my mind I think you can improve his stance, Pekka's stance, except for adding dynamic stances, which I'm not even going to start on that rant right now, and adding play styles, which I'm just going to stop saying altogether because that would make every goalie better if you add their play style. It's like, duh. And by the end of the video, I've said top five goalie more than five times, guaranteed. I, I can't diss Corey Schneider. I mean, at, at some point, you just have to feel bad for the guy. Guaranteed. Out of all the, let me look, 28 wins, guaranteed they're all because of Schneider. Possibly Hall too, but like, and not trying to diss on you guys, but you guys just have a bad team and you're, you're, you're on the upside now since you stole that number one pick from my team, but you know, I'm not going to get into that. And Corey Schneider, his stance is all good. The next 30 seconds are going to be slightly explicit. And confession time, I almost forgot about this piece of shit until I remembered he was in the AHL on this roster update. I did go scavenging through the AHL teams to find this piece of crap. Like, the, and they got his stance perfect. The little condensed 5'8", waddling around Halak, they got it perfect. And all this is coming from the bottom of my heart because I'm a low-key Islanders fan. They are ruining JT's career there. And Grice is way better than Yara will ever be. I have been waiting 10 minutes and 40 seconds for this. Finally, Queen Henrietta, we meet. This is the only goalie in the whole league where you can make a legitimate case that her play style is the reason why she lets in goals. Not her skill, but her play style. So please add that in the EA so we can light up the queen. Long live the queen. And as much as it makes me sad, she is a top five goalie. As much as I don't like her, she is a top five goalie. So with that being said, EA spent the time on her stance, and got it right. Not going to diss Craig Anderson either, Bill Masterton Trophy finalist. If you have not heard the story of his season, look it up. Great, heart-filling, heartwarming, heart-whatever story. Go look it up. And just very quickly, they got his stance perfect. I don't think he's top 10 goal in the league. I, I do think he's good, though, obviously. That's one of the reasons why they beat the Rangers. And glove blocker, width of his stance, hunched over. Everything's good to me. Whenever I'm in a Huck game and I'm about to play a Steve Mason, I always quit first minute because I can't score on him. I don't think that really has anything to do with the stance, though. And he's not elite. He's not top five. He's not top ten. But he's obviously good. You know, he's in the NHL. And for not being, you know, elite tier, you know, whatever goalie, they got his stance perfect. Like, I, I can't complain about anything. Glove, blocker, width of the stance, hunched over right. Just like Craig Anderson. Perfect stance. Ah, oh, the flower. He had a good story this season. I mean, I'm sure you would agree. Sat on the bench all season and then has played borderline remarkable in the playoffs. While I do also think that at times Doc Emmerich has sucked his dick a little too much and I, it saddens me to have to listen to it for a whole nother round. But, hey, I'm not. that's a little personal. I'm not going to get into that. And with Fleur being, you know, obviously a top 10 goalie, elite goalie, they have his stance perfect. I really just don't have anything to say about Jones. Like, I'm sure there's bad stuff you could say about him and, you know, you could, I'm sure, diss on him. But I can't think of anything. He's a young, on the rise star goalie. He's going to be elite within the next couple of years. And with that being said, they made sure to get his stance, I would say, pretty close to right. I would make it overall just a little bit more narrow, but other than that, glove blocker position, yeah, he's just he seems like he's a little hunched, whereas it seems like when he's playing, he makes himself a little bit bigger than he really is. It's clear that the Blues knew what they were doing when they traded away Brian Elliott so they could put most of their resources into Jay Gallon, because as we saw in the playoffs, he's going to be elite, if not already elite, and that's it's good. Even though I don't like the Blues, he's going to be a good goalie. And they got his stance right. Like, I'm really surprised how good they got his stance for what being like an 84 overall as a base card hut. So, yeah, it's good. Frederick Anderson, Freddie. I don't really have too much shit to say about him either. Besides the start of the year, you know, he was pretty shaky for the Leafs. But, you know, 
he's wow i think we're on a three elite goalie streak here jones allen and frederick anderson with that being said i think that they got his stance right but yet at the same time i think that his glove and blocker are <laughs> funky to say the least way down there below his ankles I was never a fan of the Sabres or the Canucks, but for some reason, it saddens me to see Ryan Miller start to decline. You know, I want to see him, you know, be a good veteran backup whenever he's ready for that. Just you know, I want him to get the cup. And you know, he used to be elite. He's declining. But with that being said, they got his stance right, in my opinion. So you know, good for them. They got his blocker glove with everything's sweet on Ryan Miller. Holtby. Holt Beast is probably going to be one of the biggest scapegoats for all Caps fans on why they lost to the Pens. And while I don't necessarily disagree, but at the same time I do disagree because you can never put all the blame on the goalie unless it's Queen Henrietta. So, he's an elite goalie. I think that he's the second best goalie in the world. All to the help of Mitch Korn. Underdeveloped goalie plus Mitch Korn equals franchise goalie. Look at Pecorine. To the last team now of the Winnipeg Jets, we have Connor Hellebuck. Or Hellebuck. Or Hell. Hmm. I don't know. But I think that they got his stance well. Unlike Frederick Anderson, where I felt like his blocking glove were too low, in this photo of Hellebuck that I found, his blocking glove are kind of low. So it's, it's a really funky stance to me, but, you know, it's... Whatever works for the goalies in real life, and it doesn't really matter in NHL 17. It's more for show, but I think that they got it right. The third and final goalie that I didn't expect to have a stance was Michael Hutchinson. While I'm fairly sure that he's supposed to be, you know, good, being a backup to Connor Hellebuck this season, I just didn't expect him to have his own stance. And with his stance being kind of very just, you know, compact and small, I think that EA got it perfect. And it's kind of weird to see, you know, a backup goalie or whatever have a perfect stance. So that being said, let's wrap it up. If you actually made it this far, I guess, thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to, please leave a comment, help me improve my videos, or if, you know, if you have a suggestion or anything, or just a simple like would be cool. Or if you really want to go the extra mile, subscribing would be cool also. I'm planning on putting out NHL content weekly. I don't mean once a week, maybe like twice or three times a week. Just depends. But either way, I hope you enjoyed.